Hey there everyone, and welcome to Doge's Emporium of Tabletop RPG Horror Story Cringe. In today's episode, we have a tale of a new player playing a barbarian, a story about the chattiest Chad to ever play Dungeons and Dragons, and much more. But first, let's meditate with Simba to prepare ourselves for the Sea of Cringe that we are about to embark on. There. Now that we are ready, let's get into these stories. Toxic player tries to pick fights with everybody and goes on rants, gets inevitably kicked from the group. By Reddit user, Red Hot Owl. I'll try to keep the summary of the setting and group dynamic brief, but there are some things that I have to clarify in order for the story to make sense. Apologies for any typos or grammatical errors, I'm writing this during my break. So, last weekend, my friend is the GM. His group of players and I were all in a game together. I very seldom participate in the actual campaigns, but I regularly help out creatively where I can. I guess you can consider me a sort of co-writer and the one in charge of the general world building. When I do get to play, I mostly do so as side characters that are there to enhance the narrative for the rest of the party. For example, this time I was playing an elderly hermit who was native to the newly discovered land that the party of adventurers were tasked with exploring. The idea was for him to serve as both a plot hook and an introductory guide. The players were to escort my character back to his people's settlement, which was to then serve as their primary foothold. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't stress that the subject of today's tale, by his own admission, isn't your typical tabletop RPG soy boy basement dweller, like you or me. He is an alpha, a leader, a real man's man, and if his opinions offend you, well, too bad. Go back to Twitter or Tumblr and cry about it, loser. Being the pillar of masculine dominance that he is, I believe it appropriate to give him a suitable nickname, so we will call him Sparkles. Sparkles joined the group a while back. The few times I've talked to him, he came across as reserved, but a fairly well-adjusted guy. I've no idea what was compelling him to act the way he did during our most recent session, but if nothing else, at least I'll get some karma out of it. The first red flag appeared when my character showed the party to a small clearing where they could recuperate before having to brave the dangerous and untamed wilds once more. Out of nowhere, Sparkles' warrior, who'd been relatively quiet up till now, for whatever reason decided to confront my hermit, saying that his uber macho character follows no man, and he will be the one to lead us forth. And if I had a problem with that, I should have done something about it. This sudden shift in personality came completely out of left field. I don't know if he was trying to show off in front of somebody, or genuinely got off on bullying a crippled old man, knowing that I'd lose if it came down to PvP. My character wasn't completely helpless, but he was certainly no match for either of the remaining party members. The priest jumped in and tried to defuse the situation. She questioned the warrior as to why he was suddenly acting so hostile. In response to which, he just grunted and stated that he'll play along for now. Whatever that meant. I figured, fair enough, nothing wrong with a bit of internal conflict to keep things interesting, even if it came across as kind of forced and unwarranted. The problem was, it just kept getting worse. He was becoming more and more confrontational for literally no reason, much to the rest of the party's discomfort. Such as the time we happened upon a quaint village of capybara folk that were vaguely described by the GM as a pacifistic and tolerant society. Sparkles laughed when he heard this and walked up to the village's mayor, threatening him and demanding that they be given provisions which the mayor had already offered. He then began to lecture this helpless NPC, and the rest of us by proxy, how peace was a lie, and only the strong survive in this dog-eat-dog -dog world. A speech that might have been more effective had, you know, somebody actually bothered challenging his worldview. If you insist on being a sheep, then I'm going to be the big bad wolf that eats you. I'm paraphrasing, but you get the idea. The party had to once again try to talk him down, which Sparkles interpreted as them taking the GM's side. You see, 
According to Sparkles, the GM had apparently created this race as some sort of political commentary to try and push a progressive agenda onto him. A perfectly reasonable conclusion, I think we can all agree. The breaking point came when we finally reached my character settlement. It turned out that he was the former chieftain who had exiled himself after failing to protect his family against the band of sea raiders. Though he had grown weak and feeble, perhaps the adventurers could succeed where he had failed and rid his people of the oppressors that now occupied their ancestral shores. This, of course, was presented as completely optional. The party could have taken their payment and went off to do their own thing. Their reward included a map of the area and thus no longer needed my player character to guide them. This was not enough for Sparkles, however. This new revelation only seemed to justify the weird rage boner that he had for my hermit. I'd fully understand if he kept it in character, but his animosity began to extend to me as a player as well. He suddenly went on a random tangent about how much he despises weak beta male characters and how he should have just killed him then and there. I basically shrugged and said that he was free to attack me if he insisted, which only seemed to piss him off more. I guess he expected for me to get into a debate with him or something, I don't know. Our argument eventually devolved to him bragging about how often he gets laid and how the last guy that looked at him wrong is currently in a wheelchair. Today on Things That Never Happened The way he was going, I was half expecting him to start claiming that he was also an ex-marine with 100 confirmed kills under his belt. Sparkles then accused the GM of trying to censor him while calling the rest of us snowflakes for just wanting to get back to playing the actual game. Fortunately, that's about as bad as it got, and he was kicked from the server shortly after. Now, I can't help but end this on an admittedly somewhat petty note. You see, Sparkles had apparently forgotten that he had added a few of us on social media. I'd ordinarily refrain from judging somebody based on their looks, but let's just say that he isn't exactly the peak of traditional masculinity that he'd like you to believe he is. Maybe the dude is struggling with his own insecurities, so I don't want to judge him too harshly, but that doesn't excuse him taking it out on the rest of us. TLDR Overaggressive player insists on picking random fights and accuses the GM of forcing some sort of agenda onto him. Gets pissed when the rest of the party doesn't agree with his choices, goes on a politically charged rant, and gets booted. Now, I'm gonna go out on a limb here, but something tells me that Sparkles is probably a fan of Andrew Tate. Also, I just have to give OP props. Giving this dude the nickname of Sparkles is a level of pettiness that I highly approve of. This dude definitely screams insecurity and was peacocking like mad to help boost his own ego by the sounds of it. I wonder if people that act like this realize how transparent they are and that to normal people, they just look like clowns. I say good on the group for booting his ass after this rubber balls in the back of my pickup truck moment. Maybe he can eventually find a group of alphas to play with. Let's move on. New Player Creates a Barbarian by Reddit user TBKSSOM The Cast Names Changed for Privacy Reasons Mike, one of my friends, has a good deal of experience with D&D and was the Dungeon Master. Myself, has extensive experience with D&D and playing a shy and naive Genasi Sorcerer. Theo, Another one of my friends, somewhat naive himself, a first-time D&D player and playing a Dragonborn Barbarian. Seth, the final friend, also a first-time D&D player, but has played a lot of Skyrim and so was interested to learn, playing a human paladin. Martin, a friend of a friend who joined in Session 2, playing a half-elf cleric. So, myself and three of my friends decided to start a simple D&D campaign to introduce Seth and Theo to the game. It sounded like a great idea at the time, but we're three sessions in and Theo is going to make me tear my hair out. Here's the highlights of what his character has done in just three sessions. Threatened to kill my character numerous times. Bit the head off a goblin we were fighting and swallowed it, and goblins are considered people in this world. 
ate an entire wheel of the world's stinkiest cheese for no reason, forcing us to stop everything and wait for him to get better. Tried to run up a flight of stairs and fell on his face. Tried to break down a door before checking if it was open. Actually tried to kill my character, forcing me to repeatedly cast friends on him and lead into a heartfelt emotional discussion about his behavior, which he then proceeded to not change at all. Talked in public about how it's perfectly okay to eat goblins alive because they're not people, after we told them that they were. Ran off on his own when we were hunting, splitting the party because he wanted to hunt bears instead of deer. Complained about almost getting killed by four bears when he was level 3. Complained about people complaining about his behavior. Constantly complained about his character being hungry when we had just eaten. Walked into an ongoing bar fight and started killing people. At this point, after the end of the second session, I had an out-of-character talk with him about what was happening and why it needed to change. Then, the following session, he told an NPC that we were trying to kill a wizard that we were in fact not trying to kill. Got frustrated that there was a puzzle in a dungeon and stopped trying to solve it. Threatened to kill my character again because I said he wasn't smart. His character actually had the highest intelligence stat in the party. When faced with an obvious animated armor trap, he decided to trigger it by picking up our healer and throwing him at the armor. This is the point where I almost decided to kill him in-game, but our healer consented to being thrown at the last second. I would like to add that this character has a fiancé who was the paladin. Now, this is by far not the worst horror story I've read. Hell, some of the things that Barbarian did could be quite comical if roleplayed right. I mean, as I was reading it, some of the things fit something a low-intelligence Barbarian might do, but then I got to the part where OP mentioned that he had the highest intelligence of all the characters. But hey, even smart people do dumb things sometimes. The worst part of the story is the fact that his behavior of trying to kill the other player characters, splitting off from the party, and just general murder-hobo antics was just bringing down the fun of everyone else at the table. Then, when talked to out of game about it, still kept doing those things anyway. In the end, I'd say have a discussion as a group and see how that plays out. Also, a side note, why did OP list all those players when he didn't mention any of them, aside from the paladin at the end? Anyway, let's move on. I can't believe it's not therapy. By Reddit user Snowy Zombie. Player character badgers an NPC paladin into a relationship with her. Player character meets a cute NPC bard and hooks up with him while long distance with the first. She returns home, meets with the paladin, and tries to convince him that she can have two boyfriends. He says no, but genuinely wishes her well. She proceeds to gaslight and berate him for not being willing to share. He gets depressed. She decides her best option is to call up a local super powerful mage, ask what options she has, and of the options presented, decides that the adapted 3.0 spell from the Book of Vile Darkness, Mind Rape, is the best path. She thought rewriting her Paladin X to be polyamorous was an acceptable thing to do. Before we claim player and character differences, we brought it up out of character and said it was kind of messed up that her normally good character would do this. She got confused and said, It's like therapy. What? That's mind control and taking away someone's agency. If this player thinks that that is akin to therapy, she needs to be in it. That's all I really got to say on this one. Let's move on. Min-Maxer Threatens Other Players and Tries to Be the Main Character By Reddit user Arrow3619 Alright, so this story took place a few years ago, and I have since stopped talking with this group. This story includes me, my one friend, who we will call Paladin, because he would always play a Paladin, and a few other players who don't contribute that much to this story. Paladin would act like he was better than everybody else, both in-game and out-of-game. Specifically, he would always target me and give me shit, because at this time, I was shy and socially awkward, and I wouldn't stand up for myself. 
he would always grant himself the title of party leader at the start of the campaign, and if anyone objected, he would always threaten them with PvP. Additionally, he would always pretty much copy and paste the same character with pretty much the same backstory, where his character's family was killed by raiders from whatever species my character happened to be, and then he would discriminate against me because of that. He would always do what he wanted to do, whether that be going off on some multi-hour side quest that really only benefited him, or taking all of the kills in a combat encounter on his first action, because he would always, somehow, get the first action. Additionally, he would always claim first pick of the loot, because after all, he got all the kills. This also extended to magic items that would suit another member of the party better. If we tried to take it, or tell him that it wasn't meant for him, he would always either threaten us or outright attack us. If one of us objected to his side quest, he would attack us. He would take serious campaigns way too lightly and make jokes at the rest of the party's expense. And when we did a funny campaign to try and appease him, of course he chose that one time to be serious and get pissed off when someone made a joke. Once, I decided to try my hand at DMing for the group, so I did research and worked hard to make what was supposed to be a balanced campaign. Of course, Paladin would come in, make the campaign all about him, and bully me into letting him have some special item or trait, because it was a part of his backstory. Of course, he pretty much insta-killed any monsters that the party would encounter, and then he started to shit on my campaign because it was too easy. He ruined my confidence as a DM, and he turned me off from D&D for a while, because he was friends with the rest of the group, and I didn't really know any other people that played D&D. Recently though, I have found a new group that is not full of toxic assholes. Damn, no wonder OP got away from D&D for a while. Paladin sounded like a right asshole, and the DM doesn't get off the hook either. Upon looking at the comments section of the story, OP did state that Paladin and their normal DM were apparently close friends, so it's no wonder that the DM allowed this type of thing to happen, and apparently the other players weren't that great either. Thankfully, it does sound like OP has found a new group to play D&D with that doesn't consist of douchebags. Let's move on. When that guy runs the game, we should have run too. By Reddit user, Terrace Kagi. Meet Bob, not his real name. Bob's first character was called the Mangler, and had a book full of scalps of all of the things he killed. Like the world's worst scrapbook collector, that he showed off to every NPC he met. He's also the nicest and friendliest guy you'll ever meet outside of the game. He also toned it down a bit if asked, and since we were all teenagers, we kept him around. After a few years of playing with his litany of bizarre edgelord characters, we had a lull in the campaign and decided to do some one-shots, and he offered to run a post-apocalyptic campaign inspired by Fallout. We stupidly said yes thinking that, as a DM, he had to be better, right? In Session 1, we all got booted out of our vault for various reasons and made our way to the wastelands of Seattle. Two of us wanted to clean up the wastes, two wanted to take over a raider gang and rule, and one just wanted to make amends and go back into the vault. An uneasy truce was on, and off we went, killing various bugs for a nearby settlement, exploring a decaying military installation, and generally blowing off some steam. And in Session 3, we returned to our base near the vault entrance, set our defenses and a watch, and called it a night. We awoke to be told by the DM that we'd been captured in the night by a raider gang. They'd apparently made it past our tripwires, our turret, and hit everyone, including our watch, with sedatives without ever rolling a dice, and captured us all. We should have run from the table here, but two of us wanted to conquer a raider gang, so we figured this was their chance, and so we're brought before the leader of the gang who listens to the two players' pleas for clemency, offering to work for the gang. The leader accepts, on the condition that they prove themselves by raping the other three player characters, two women and one man if it matters, to bind themselves to the gang by blood. Keep in mind, 
We discussed red lines before every campaign, and this was one for nearly everyone. Every attempt at negotiations failed, though the DM didn't roll any dice. Any attempt to get out of our bonds was met with some variation of, they're watching you too closely for that. At which point, we were given an ultimatum. Either they do it, or the entire gang would rape us all and enslave us. All hell broke loose. Two players quit on the spot. The other three in the DM ended up having a shouting match over, that's just the way the wastes are, and how he wasn't sexist because the gang wanted to rape the men too. Perhaps, unsurprisingly, we never finished that session, and by the time we went back to our regular campaign, we didn't have Bob with us, and we re-ran our red line conversation with the remaining players. That guy. That guy never changes. Seriously, I will never understand why so many people in these stories insist on including those themes in their games. Especially this one, considering they all talked about what they didn't want in the game beforehand. But, at least in this story, the players put their foot down and either left the game outright or confronted the Game Master before leaving. And I'm not surprised that they didn't invite Bob to any more games that they played. But that will do it for today. As always, I appreciate all of you, and may all of your games remain horror story free. Until next time.